Welcome to the fourth and final episode in a Legendarium series about the life and reign of King William II of England. In part four, we will talk about how William reached the peak of his power towards the end of the 11th century, only to be struck down in a hunting accident that might not have been so accidental. By 1096, King William II reached the peak of his power. His eldest brother Robert, Duke of Normandy and William's greatest rival, had left Europe to lead the First Crusade. To take control of his brother's duchy, William Rufus allied with his other brother, Henry Beauclerc, despite William having exiled Henry some years ago. Together, they fought a series of wars to expand their continental holdings. In January 1098, they captured the county of Maine and besieged the city of Le Mans. King Philippe I of France grew alarmed at William's expansion. Since the Duke of Normandy also had the Kingdom of England to fund his campaigns, William posed a particular threat to France. So, Philippe marched north and forced King William to accept a truce in 1099. Soon after, William and his brother Henry Beauclerc returned to the Kingdom of England. Though William almost certainly hoped for another war in France, England, a country the Norman warlord had nothing but contempt for, would become his tomb. On August 2nd, 1100, William went hunting in the New Forest, where his brother Richard had died 25 years earlier. A monk later wrote that the king had an ominous dream the night before, yet he still went on his hunt. William's party included his brother Henry Beauclerc, an archer named Sir Walter Tyriel, and the de Clare brothers. During the hunt, Tyriel fired an arrow that accidentally entered the king's chest while he was distracted by sunlight. King William broke off part of the shaft stuck in his chest, but he soon tumbled to the ground and the blow forced the shaft deeper into his body. Though the rest of the hunting party hurried to the king's aid, he was already unconscious if not dead. Sir Walter Tyriel, terrified at the thought of being punished, immediately fled to France. He never returned to England and always insisted he killed the king by accident. The de Clare brothers, Roger and Gilbert, immediately left to fortify their family seats to prepare for the civil war that would surely follow the king's death. Meanwhile, William's younger brother, Henry Beauclerc, hurried to seize the royal treasury and call the royal council to elect him king, all within 48 hours of his older brother's death. Henry never made any effort to punish Tyriel despite being king of England. Of course, the party left King William's corpse in the forest, where it was discovered by an English charcoal burner named Perkis. Perkis carried the king in his horse-drawn cart to the cathedral tower in Winchester, where he was buried. When the tower collapsed a year later, the church declared it to be God's judgment upon the wicked king. Some believe that William was killed by a poacher in the forest who resented the Norman lords for the harsh forest laws that valued a deer's life more than a man's. Others believed that Henry Beauclerc had his brother murdered, given how quickly he seized the crown and the treasury after his brother's death. Could he have had it planned out? We don't know for certain. Still others believed William to be part of a pagan cult that demanded royal sacrifice for the health of the kingdom. This, of course, is the most far-fetched theory of all. Of course, it is just as likely that William was killed by accident. Hunting was a very dangerous sport, and William would have been one of dozens of noblemen killed in the pursuit of deer and hares. 
Can anything be said for King William II? Like his father and the other Norman barons, he had nothing but contempt for the English that he ruled. Churchmen despised him because of his habit of robbing churches to finance both his wars and his extravagant court. Yet William was also a skilled war captain, stabilizing his kingdom's borders for the first time since the Norman Conquest of 1066. He also kept England and Normandy united. The Norman kings, including his brother Henry I, ruled a cross-channel kingdom until King John lost Normandy to France in 1204, which so disgusted his Anglo-Norman barons that they made him sign the most famous document in English history, the Magna Carta. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.